backlash from Wildstorm, Jim Lee's studio, the character that flirted with trying to be interesting on its own, but I don't know that it ever really went anywhere. Um, I mean, for a minute, it was the thing for, you know, you got Jim Lee's Wildcats and then the subsequent kind of spin-off titles like Stormwatch and that type of stuff. And Backlash was in there. And he was... He had some kind of popularity at the time. And I... I never disliked it. I never hated it. Or It was all kind of like very neutral stuff to me. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was just kind of... I, I don't know. I didn't... It just never really stood out. The thing that I like about Backlash was my introduction to the character. I can't remember what issue of Stormwatch it was. One of these days I'll find my Stormwatch issues and bust them out and kind of go over them. But Backlash was introduced, as I recall, as like the old kind of team member of Stormwatch, maybe the leader. And when he was introduced, he was like going to retire or something to that effect. He was moving on. He had kind of an interesting design. Uh, you know, this black outfit and this face mask, this hair out the top, very 90s kind of costume design. Um, I just like the idea of, like, the older warrior moving on yet not being able to. I mean, I've always kind of liked that idea. It, it seems like there's this idea in pop culture with comics and movies and stuff like that, that kids will only identify with other kid characters. Um, I never did. I was liked, like, I was a kid, but I thought Han Solo and Luke Skywalker were awesome. And to me, they were not young people. I mean, like, age-wise, I'm older than they ever were from, like, a real-world perspective. But to me, as a kid, they were, like, grown-ass adults, and I wanted to be the grown-ass adult doing cool, adventurous shit. So I've always liked the idea of, like, the old warriors the guys that are, you know, have been through stuff. Not necessarily like the new guy who's learning something. That was much less interesting to me. Like watching a new character learn his powers rather than the old guys who are at the end of their career. It's just a thing that I always was kind of interested in. I think I only have three issues. I don't know if this is a mini series or it was an ongoing series. I don't recall because it didn't really stand out in any way that was really like, oh, this is really good. This is fascinating. This is I have to keep collecting this because it just wasn't very interesting. So we'll do a kind of a quick flip through. Um, Brett Booth on art. He was one of those that was like, again, with the way that Backlash was flirting with being like a major character. Brett Booth kept flirting with being like a superstar penciler. And he's good. Absolutely. But... Sorry, I'm stopping myself, and I'm, I'm either losing my mind or something weird is happening here, but there's two covers on this thing, and I can't remember if that was an intentional thing. See? I got one other comic now that I see this where this was done. I don't know what the hell that's about. I've got the same kind of interior credits page. Anyway... Um, again, no disrespect meant to Brett Booth at all, but it seemed like it, it was like he was trying to be like the the rising star of Wildstorm. And for a minute, he kind of was. But he had Scott Clark doing stuff. He had Ryan Benjamin doing stuff. And they're all good. And they're all really good now. Those of them who are, you know, some of the some some guys are still drawing. Some of them are still with us. But um, it wasn't, you know, who was the superstar that come out of Wildstorm? Travis Charest taking over Wildcats and becoming just amazing. J. Scott Campbell doing Gen 13. Those were the big guys. And all these other guys were kind of, again, no disrespect meant, but they're just kind of Jim Lee clones, but lesser artists. They're not as good. Like, I feel like they're giving it. They're all, they're putting in all the effort. They're doing the best they can, but they... I don't know. When it's it's just kind of Jim Lee like, it's like that, but not the same. It's just not as good. And then Wildstorm Comics had a kind of distinctive vibe and a feel that it was okay. It was just fine. It was never really anything interesting. I never really got into it. And again, I liked Brett Booth enough. It was okay. He really went for some big kind of crazy action shots. It looks neat. The coloring, I feel like Wildstorm had some great coloring going on. Wildstorm and Top Cow had some fantastic coloring going on. And 
they're really just throwing everything in there. Who's inks doing the inks? Sal Regular, Alex Garner, Tom McWeeny, and Edwin Rossell. Not sure who that last one is, but it's all kind of cool. I've heard people describe Brett Booth's art as like Jim Lee crossed with Todd McFarlane in a way. And that I can kind of see. He's almost a Spider-Man-ish character with his poses and these whips zapping around. It's kind of like spider webbing, I guess, in a way. It's a very interesting, very pointy face, jaw thing going on here. Um, I didn't bother to reread the story because, I mean, I don't care. But, we're, you know, we're here to kind of see some flashy artwork. This has got some energetic movement like this. All these laser blasts. It's an interesting way of rendering these weird kind of chunky laser blasts. And the way he's like jump, flip, ducking, moving around. It was very Spider-Man-like, right? I mean, right? And the, the, the cable kind of coming towards him. It's very Spider-Man. And it's pretty cool. I kind of like this silhouette shot of him standing here walking away. It kind of works pretty well. Um, I feel like this has kind of a, got a Todd McFarlane vibe, like a Spawn mask, a Spider-Man look. The inking's pretty crisp. But where's his fucking nose? It just doesn't make sense. Now, there's a thing that I feel like a lot of artists started adopting, and I think it's, it's jumped on with McFarlane, where you draw a guy in a mask like Spider-Man, and McFarlane would draw him often without a nose. It would just be like a flat piece. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. Um, but sometimes in a mask, trying to draw that big prominent nose when you have a full face mask, it just looks better from like a silhouette kind of point of view where it's just like a head shape. This looks weird. Like it feels like the top of his head is cut off. I feel like if you're drawing a, a skull, it's like your eye is here, so your nose would be over here somewhere, and then you got this weird lower lip, and then your chin. Like, he needs to have more of a skull. His skull itself would come up where the top of his hairline is, so this hair should be up taller. Now, you could call it a stylistic choice, because it is, but it just looks weird to me. It also feels like the back of his head is probably, like, right down here, so this jaw comes all the way back to like this point back here. I guess I feel like if I'm gonna sit here and talk some shit, maybe I should like illustrate what I'm talking about. But in a very broad sense, when you have a head, you know, and you're doing like a side profile, you know, you start with like a circular shape and then you've got the jawline. Now, roughly speaking, looking straight on, the ear is basically like right in the middle of the head. And then, roughly speaking, bottom of the ear will show you what, where the nose is. Bottom of the ear, top of the ear. That's roughly where it's at. And then, you know, you, you figure out where your eyes are going to be. And you can kind of decide the, the shape of your face. It's going to be a big problem, like indentation and a big nose. And, you know, you can figure out like a basic face shape. And then you got to have that, that whole skull in here where it, you know, connects in there and you get the neck on it. Like, you have to have some basic proportions and, uh, you know, so that's kind of what that should look like. Now, you look at this thing, it basically looks like, the way that head looks, it looks like, like, here's an eye, and then he's got no nose, and then he's got an angry lower lip if we take the mask off and then he's got his big chin that comes all the way back to here and then his skull just cuts off like this and it looks like it kind of comes like like this almost and then his he's got the eye set back farther so his eyes like right here and then his neck so maybe he's got a little nose here and like it it feels like his ear is way back here. Like, it kind of looks like it's trying to look like this. He should have a nose. He should have his head out there. It should come back farther. It just looks odd from a generic kind of facial structure standpoint. Big old face I did. But it's an image comic, so it's more about interesting kind of dynamic looking i don't know it it 
it works, but then it also does not work at all. It looks really strange. And I see this stuff and it just feels like there's another weird head shape. Like, good God, like the back of her head there. Is her hair shaved up that way? What a strange looking fucking thing. But this is just another one of those things. It just feels like boring wild storm stuff where it's like hot babes and dudes and like long cloaks and overly rendered coats and the hair is flailing in the distance and giant moons in the background. It just feels so stereotypical, boring, wild storm stuff. It just, it's boring. I don't like it. It's, it's, it, this is another kind of like not great side profile of the face. So it's just interesting to me because a lot of these artists have things that they excel at. This is him excelling at superhero action, fighting muscular figures. This stuff all works. But then you get into like, I'm going to draw a nose, a mouth, a really deep chin, a weird face on her. And it just suddenly like, you can see where they haven't learned some of the basics there. Now, again, I say this as like, I'm... I draw my own comics and I'm a nobody and I haven't been published by Image Comics. So fuck me. What do I know? But what you can tell is that he definitely had the chops. The, I, to me, this looks like an artist who's like, he's a little rough. He's following a lot of the same kind of like stereotypical ciphers. I guess you can call it a nose looks like this. When you draw a cheek, you put these highlighted cheekbone lines on there all the time. When you draw the eyes and you put these little cross lines up between their eyebrows and you put these little hatching lines across the middle of it. Um, just shapes, like stereotypical shapes to draw these things as opposed to thinking it was three-dimensional forms, blah, blah, blah. But when you see something like this, he's doing a down angle, he's getting perspective correct, he's throwing in all the technological backgrounds. He's good with all that type of stuff. It's just like normal human figures are kind of weird. There's another odd side profile, giant nose, weird mouth. But what I was trying to get at is this looks like a guy who's like, as he's going to progress in the future, he's going to get really good. Um, and Brett Booth definitely got better as he went into the future, no doubt. He's having some reminiscing about the, you know, some shit that went on, I think, in the earlier Stormwatch issues. Got the girl here. Um, some bad stuff went on. Had an alien inside of her. Had to separate it. I like this silhouette, like the black outfit with these straps and gears and on it on him. It's kind of interesting. I mean, very long legs, but it works. It's kind of cool. Wildstorm talent search. I remember there's the top cow one and there was the wildstorm one. And I was like, oh my god, I've got to enter this, but I never did because I knew I wasn't good enough. Um, I still should have just anyway. Scott Clark pinup. Not great. It's all right. Not great. Even the coloring is bland as shit. That's okay. Todd McFarlane's first action figures. I mean, cute and kind of whimsical and nostalgic, but they were not... They were okay. I had the spawn. I don't know what the hell I ever did with it. I wish I kept it, but I probably sold it or gave it away because they ended up not giving a shit because... Who cared? I remember keeping it in its package for a long time. And one day after like a couple of years, I'm like, fuck it. I want to just touch this goddamn toy. So I ripped the package open and like played with it for a little bit. Like looked at it. Oh, it's kind of cool. And then I just, I didn't care. Who gives a shit? Never would have cared about the Violator. I actually, upon retrospect, Medieval Spawn looks actually a lot more interesting. But here we are. More of this Wildstorm stuff. I mean, this is like a regular human man. But look at this giant, monstrous, like, third-rate Deadpool dumbass Pike character back here. And there's another. Look at the profile on this guy. Good Lord, he looks like a weird... Like, there's that flat-ass nose. You wonder why or how you can make that profile on that face work? Well, there you go. He just gives him the flattest nose you've ever seen in your life. Again, no disrespect meant to Brett Booth. For all the cool stuff that he knew how to do, side profiles are where he is lacking severely. It looks so goddamn strange. So weird. But also, this is like a big, this is a big drawing on the original artboard. This is 11 by 17. So this is a big piece of drawing. And the bigger a face is, the more it's easy to let the proportions get away from you. Um... 
And then there's just a lot of like random like rendering for the sake of rendering. What is the point of this like highlighted like black line shape here and cross hatching coming down from it? I bet the artist doesn't even know why he put it there. It's just like, I have to put lines on paper. That's how these things work. But whatever, fight pikes and and backlash and they're gonna fight this shot always i thought was kind of interesting like the open line kind of reverse silhouette of it and then the coloring doing that highlighting on them that drawing's pretty badass that looks really good um this guy is apparently some lizard monster and jesus that pike is he stabbing backlash in the back like that should kill him I don't know what the hell's going on in this story. I just, I don't care. There's another thing. Here's here's Brett Booth excelling. This big, giant panel of him kicking, that foot coming towards you. Energy and movement and action. You know, like, he's got something there. And then he got this villainous girl that he was uh, after all the time. Taboo, I think it is, is her name. See, there's supposed to be, like, a thing. It's backlash and taboo uh, relationships, like Batman and Catwoman. One's good, one's bad, but they've got a thing. I don't know. Um, and I don't care. They're off in the Arctic now. They're in the cold. She can, like, goo her little outfit onto her body, I guess. I, I don't remember what the hell the story was there. But there's, like... That standard like shot of like someone jumping through the air, the girl with their ass in the air and little pointed feet. I've seen how many different artists pull off that stupid pose. It's so ridiculous. But I guess it's exciting, I guess. But, you know, our mismatched duo, fighting, 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 lots of panels. It you know, it it all works. It's action superhero comics. Um and then they run into a place and get this guy. His name's Cyberjack. Hey, get us out of here. You're in a ship. Get us out of here. We got to go. We, we got we got to get to issue two. All right. Here's where some things started to, like, really fall apart in a way. Savage Dragon was one of my favorite comics. Ever. It, the early issues of Savage Dragon are still some of my favorite comics ever. And just no one could, one, get the characterization right, and two, get the drawing of the character right. And Brett Booth, as far as Dragon, he fails. This leg looks really weird. It's just not really well done. But again, I'm a nobody, so what do I know? Bad guys in some bad guy base doing some bad guy stuff. Who cares? Big standard shot of the big guy in a ridiculous outfit talking. Who cares? Big double, big splash page of some bad guy and other bad guys standing there with the capes flowing everywhere. Who cares? Like, I don't give a shit about any of this crap. Who are all these people that we don't care about? Very Todd McFarlane, right? I mean, the cape flowing everywhere. You can certainly see where his um, inspirations come from. And it's visually interesting. It's just as from a story point. Like, I don't care. All these villains from the Wildstorm universe are just don't care, don't care, super, super don't care. Page six, I'm still not caring. Some different inking going on, some much thinner line approaches. It must be a different guy inking on some of these pages. That shot's kind of interesting. Anyway, Jesus, seven pages in. Can we get with the characters we're kind of interested in? We've got Backlash and, uh, again, what is her name? Taboo, is that her name? Yeah. Um, they're in Chicago. Well, who are we going to run into? I can't imagine. Um, whatever. Their story's going on. And they're at the Chicago Police Department. What is this giant swollen alien head? That is just something else. Good Lord. That's Officer Wild. That's the name of a female cop character in the Savage Dragon book. Oh, sh oh, shit. That might be one of the worst drawings of the Savage Dragon ever done. Um, the fin is so wrong. It doesn't stand up straight. I think we've gone on about this, but it, the, the front part, this front line of the fin is supposed to be pointing straight at you. So it folds down and comes down in front. Now, to the random person may read the books, it may not give a shit, but to somebody who is reading the dragon, 
It just is completely wrong. It looks terrible. His size is wrong. The face shape doesn't look right. It's a very standard, typical Brett Booth face. It just, it's off model. I mean, he, he went out of his way to give him like a bulging package. So that's on character. That's on model for the character. Short little tie. Um, it's just not great. I was like, oh, this is, this is bad. You got the dragon pumping iron. Again, dragon is supposed to be huge. Now, Eric Larson draws him like cartoony, comically huge. But that's to kind of emphasize the look of the character. And so these other artists who don't draw that kind of big, ridiculous kind of style that Eric Larson does, it's like they didn't know what to do with the character. They didn't know how to make him look appropriately big and thick. You just got to push it farther. Make him big. He's very muscular, but he's like a like standard bodybuilder big. But Dragon is like really big, especially in his upper body. It's like this is an okay drawing from an anatomical standpoint. Finn's still wrong all over the place. Wrong, wrong, wrong. It's kind of unfortunate when you get somebody who's like, they're probably like, Dragon's awesome, and we want to cross him over in our, our mini-series with Backlash that has some cool shit going on. And unfortunately, it doesn't really pay off. I just, I could not care less about any of this story. Nick Manabat. Now, that's an interesting pinup. I, I wish that the color was pulled out of it and we could see it in black and white. Um, there actually might be an opportunity for that for myself coming up soon. Um... We'll see. We'll see if I get an email. Um, Gen 13, that was going to be a big deal. The other, like, big up-and-comer, the, the Scott Clark artist with drawing Warblade and Rip Claw. I think I've already done one issue of that. It was just super not good. Ugh, it's just so much of the same stuff in these books going on. I just It wasn't that interesting to me. And again, I... I I want to point out, like, I know there's a lot of people that look back on these books with a lot of fondness. And, you know, I challenge you, like, is it fondness for the nostalgia of the time of reading comics that were fun? But do you actually remember the stories being awesome? Because I've read these and no, I don't. I don't think that they're awesome. There's nothing there. It's just standard boring shit. Backlash is kind of interesting and Brett Booth can draw the shit out of them. Um, but God damn it, where's the dragon to fight him? Oh, there he is. He jumps in there. And then we cut to another scene and Backlash is pulling a Spider-Man pose on a wall. Giant double page spread of these villains, I guess. What the hell is going on? Just more characters, more new characters, more, more, more. You don't care about any of these guys. Oh, we don't get to see Dragon and Backlash fight in this issue. <sighs> okay. Jesus, Stormwatch is up to issue 17 at this point. Man, they're cranking those out. Well, issue three, that's not a bad cover. It's a pretty decent female figure and the leathery kind of drawing and rendering on it is cool. I like the coloring. These guys knew what they were doing. It was looking good. I don't know who this is. Oh, is this one? It's supposed to be Jacob Marlowe, I think, from... Wildcats, I do believe. My God, he's being chased down by Deadpool ripoff dork. <sighs> this is so boring. Oh, all right. He's trying. I can see the like the Eric Larson vibe that he's trying to get. This feels like something you'd see in a dragon comic. A big shot of his face, screamy, big giant fist. It just... It's not working. And I don't think the dragon had fucking fangs. In fact, I'm certain he doesn't. That's an interesting add-on. Again, the fin. This thing should be coming straight out this way. It should just cut straight across this way and then up to connect to that second part. And when it's not done right, it looks bad. It's an okay fist, but it just looks weird. I don't know. It's just not great. But never say that uh, Brett Booth didn't go for the big kind of... Like, he swings for the fences, and sometimes he hits it pretty good. But um, kind of stereotypical stuff. I feel like this is like a layout I've seen in a Jim Lee X-Men comic. Like, this is Magneto, and I don't know. It's just... I guess there's only so many kind of different ways you can pull off these poses and angles in these books. Backlash wiped out here. Dragon just... 
trying to look big and awesome, but he just he doesn't carry a fraction of the power and the weight as he does in his own book. It's kind of unfortunate. But Dragon is big and tough. Smashes. I like that the Dragon smashes the shit out of whoever this fucking dumbass new character. I have no idea who he is. He's got the spiky helmet and cape and energy. And Dragon just smashes his face and he's done. Man, fuck these stupid characters. It's another terrible drawing of Dragon. It doesn't work. I'm sorry. No disrespect to Brett Booth Mint. I swear. I promise. Then again, I'm nobody. Could I have done better at the time? No. Can I do better now? Maybe on some small level. That's not a bad picture of a uh, zealot from Wildcats. She shows up. I mean, it's it's okay. She shows. I mean, these guys are always fighting, kicking, punching. This reverse silhouette ninja kick with her foot pointed at him is like ballerina shit. Okay. Oh. He grabs her by her foot and just throws her down. Get her. Man, he's mutant huge like he's just a giant mutated creature of some type um they like to do this shit where it's like two panels of like a face i've seen several of these already in these books i never pointed them out until now where it's like one side of one person's face and then it's mirrored on the next panel as if it's one face like the nose lines up the mouth would line up that's kind of it gets old um Whatever. He gets away. The two girls are too stupid to hold on to him. He gets away because he's stupid. Um, this guy, Pop. Pop, is it Han or just Han? Pop Han? I, I don't know. Chuck Gibson on Inks. There we go. Um, he's been commenting on some of the videos, and I think that's awesome. Pop, this artist, would go on to develop, a. I feel like, a more distinctive style this is not bad there's the same shot of the like i was talking about earlier with the girl jumping through the air with her ass up there i like this one better than the other one it's got a the shape of the booty it's a little more interesting but like the anatomy in this it's pretty crisp i like the highlighting on it and um the inks look pretty damn solid actually um it's interesting coloring with these bright yellows i don't know it's fine. It's pretty good. I just know that that artist um, go on. The artist, the penciler, goes on to develop a style that looked a little more interesting than this. It's fine. It's a little more interesting to me than the stuff that we're seeing in this book. Gen thirteen, the hottest mini series of ninety four is now an unlimited series. That was a big deal. Big deal. Um, Dragon should be so much bigger, not taller. I mean, I would accept that Backlash is a six-foot-something guy. And Eric Larson has said that the Savage Dragon, I'm going to say, I, I don't remember exactly, six-foot, six-foot-one, but his fin makes him like six-seven. But he should have a massive upper body, big chest, big arms. It, proportionally, you've just neutered the character. It's not working. And it's just another terrible face. And I don't know that Backlash can kick the Savage Dragon and take him down. Dragon is way fucking tough. Um, I don't I don't know if I buy that. I don't know what the strength level of Backlash is, but um it's I I just I don't see him being somebody that can stand up to the dragon. This cute little dance move he does with his little ass like he's shitting on the back of Dragon's head. He's like, here, <laughs> take that dragon. So the dragon whips out a gun. I mean, the dragon uses guns, but I don't know. He doesn't... I just needed to have a scene where Backlash, like, flips like a ninja around the bullet so he can toss his knife. I mean, Backlash is kind of like a ninja in a way. I kind of get that vibe. And holy shit, did he over put, overdo the sections in the dragon's fin. He does not have that many. It's just no one's paying attention to the way that fin should look. And yes, it matters. Not a great drawing. Kind of a silly face. That's starting to get there. That's starting to get to like the big, strong proportions. Does the physical proportions of this dragon here in any way resemble the way that he looked right there? It does not feel like the same dude. It's like he's swelling up and getting bigger like the Hulk. But that is not how the dragon works. Um, I want to double check. Did I miss the creative team? Inks by Reglick. Candelario, Gibson, Hope, Sellers, Townsend. Man, they had everybody inking this book. 
I guess, uh, you know, props to Booth for keeping up the penciled pages and having to bring in a lot of inkers. <laughs> How many times have we seen, like, an action shot and some girl, like, leaning on them? Got to get the butt shot in there. She's like, I love you. I'm with you. And he's like, yeah, I know. I'm wearing fishnet. It's a little creepy. Um, God, it looks like Zealot's throwing her vagina at this guy's face, which signed me up. She gets knocked the fuck out, just falls down, blank-eyed, and Dragon's like, what am I doing in this comic book? More of that reverse silhouette stuff, and the coloring kind of does a good job selling it. That's interesting. They threw, like, a cheesy little tiny grenade that blows up an entire building. It's a pretty good explosion, I think. And end of that. So, you know... <clears throat> A lot of people really liked the Backlash character, the miniseries, or whatever this was. I just, it wasn't fantastic. It, it's okay. It's not great, not terrible, but it's just kind of forgettable. Just not much there. There's not much that makes me go, oh, you remember this great story porn or this interesting thing that they did? But man, people were buying this stuff up and they were making a lot of money. So, I mean, throw everything out there and let's just get it. So... Backlash, kind of fun, kind of boring. One of the worst interpretations of Dragon ever. I say that as a guy who's still collecting Savage Dragon to this day from issue one. And I kind of know what the character should look like. And you want it to be on model. And you want the characterization to be on model. And it's not great. Anyway, that's enough. It's fun to kind of get a chance to look at these. It's another one of these books. Once I put them away, I'll probably never, ever look at them again. So it was fun to kind of get them out here and just kind of talk about them. I'm curious as to what people remember, remember about these. Were this a, was this something that you were super into when they came out? Because, again, I know a lot of people were into this character. He was supposed to be awesome. So that's it. That's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.